Bună ziua și bine ați revenit la ora arbitrajului. Încă o dată, astăzi vom fi nevoiți de um, profilul invitatului nostru să discutăm în limba engleză, fiind vorba despre un străin, un italian, care vorbește limba arbitrajului internațional, limba engleză și, în general, și cu ocazia acestei emisiuni. So, uh, as I was saying, uh, as it has happened to already several times, uh, the language of our uh, uh, today's session is English, and uh, I have the pleasure to introduce our uh, our guest today. The name is uh, very familiar for everybody involved in uh, construction disputes, construction projects, especially infrastructure construction projects here in Romania. Mr. Giovanni Di Folco, who is uh, uh, the manager running uh, Techno Engineering and Associates Group. Uh, welcome, Mr. Di Folco. Thank you very much for inviting me, Dr. Vasile. It's, it's really a pleasure. I'm sure that we are going to have a very interesting debate on your favorite topic, which are international arbitration and uh, alternative dispute uh, resolution mechanism associated to arbitration, uh, and all of them in connection with construction disputes, which is your uh, specialization. Uh, now, uh, I was saying earlier that everybody involved in uh, certain types of projects, construction projects, knows perfectly you and your, uh, your company. I would uh, choose today an unusual approach for a moderator. I would kindly ask you to introduce yourself and your company rather than me going through uh, the impressive CV, uh, both your personal and your company's one. Thank you, Dr. Vasile. Um, I'm a civil engineer by trade. Uh, with uh, 35 years experience uh, in, uh, in the field of transportation engineering. I specialized uh, early on in uh, design and construction and project management. And later on in my life, I specialized in uh, contract management, uh, dispute avoidance, dispute resolution, uh, with a special focus on international adjudication and arbitration. Um, my engineering background uh, allowed me to uh, pursue certain expertises in uh, delay analysis and uh, quantum engineering, as well as uh, uh, technical uh, forensic analysis in, uh, for, for concrete structures and asphalt works. Um, the company I co-own together with my partner uh, was a well-known uh, professional in the Romanian industry. Uh, she is an uh, engineer, Eugenia Dunca. Um, it's a medium-sized uh, uh, techno-legal consulting engineering firm uh, with uh, four international offices, um, main office in Romania. Um, 150 people and 20 of them are uh, uh, construction lawyers, so the rest are engineers specializing in planning, contract, quantity surveying, quantum, and uh, there is a number of experts in uh, delay analysis and uh, quantum engineering uh, that they give um, evidence in court regularly. Um, the company works in uh, about 14 different countries. Um, we cover the Middle East, uh, Europe and the Balkans, North Africa, Canada, uh, North America and uh, Latin America. And this is pretty much about what we do. Okay, uh, isn't it a little bit unusual for uh, such a company to have its main uh, headquarter in Romania, even if you are a truly international uh, company? What's the explanation for an Italian setting up uh, the, the main headquarters of an international company in Romania? Well, the choice of Romania was not uh, um, one that just came uh, by, by pure chance. Um, my partner and I, we looked at various venues and we did obviously our homework and we did uh, research of, uh, of South Europe, East Europe on countries that would have offered uh, best place to start a consulting engineering firm um, specialized like ours. And Romania came up top together with uh, Poland and we chose Romania. Uh, the reason was a very large pool of graduate engineers and lawyers. Um, the use of, this, of the English language in contracts, the use of fitting conditions of contract, uh, um, the use of dispute boards, uh, the, the use of international arbitration, ICC arbitration, 
Um, and then at the, at the time that we established 15 years ago, um, the construction market in uh, Romania was very interesting. Uh, most probably one of the most interesting in, in Europe at that time. Uh, all these together gave us the confidence that uh, we could invest uh, in Romania as a first starting point for our consulting firm. Mm -hmm. And uh, about the, the profile of uh, Techno Engineering and Associates, actually what do you do is to provide integrated services to construction companies or employers, beneficiaries of construction, uh, uh, in construction contracts. Is this sort of mixed profile, technical plus legal, uh, unique? Uh, is something that you felt necessary to implement or it is a concept that uh, you can find uh, in other jurisdictions also? By choice, uh, my partner and I decided that we should have dedicated um, our services to only one uh, side of the industry, of, mm. the, of the construction industry, and that was uh, the one of construction company. Mm. Uh, only uh, in that direction and not take on work for employers or sureties, bankers or... You or never accept the mandates for We never uh, accept the mandate. Yeah. Uh, we felt that uh, we come both from a, a construction background and it would have been better to do what we know how to do best. Mm -hmm. um, the techno-legal was something that we had in mind from the very beginning. Um, we are in, uh, in the top tier uh, internationally as amongst the 10 largest consulting engineering firms that they do these type of services, but there is only two amongst that 10 that they are truly techno-legal. Uh, we felt that uh, uh, engineering, without the respect and the understanding of the law, uh, cannot work. Especially in a, an environment where we provide, uh, we provide integrated contract management and claims resolution assistance. Uh, there has to be a mix between uh, um, specialized engineers and specialized lawyers, especially construction lawyers. So it was uh, from the very beginning uh, our uh, concept and uh, we developed over the years and it has worked out very well. And uh, I'm proud to say that we, we are most probably the, 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 the true techno-legal consulting engineering firm that operates internationally. Mm -hmm. And uh, moving a little bit towards uh, arbitration, which is the, the essence of all our debates here uh, at the arbitration hour. Um, for such an uh, impressive portfolio of projects and clients such as yours, uh, how many ar arbitration proceedings have you been involved in, let's say, in the last 10 years or 15 years, if you have uh, a counter for, for all these projects? Well, in the past uh, 15 years, we had a mix of, uh, uh, of disputations, uh, procedures. Uh, we have been involved in about just over 100 uh, international dispute resolutions uh, using the dispute board's mechanism. Yeah. Um, about 20... Uh, domestic uh, court cases and uh, just over 30 international arbitration um, using the International Chamber of Commerce in Paris, mm -hmm. rules and, and the court. Mm -hmm. So I would say that this is the, the, the type of uh, result for an average to big law firm specialized in uh, dispute resolution for, for the period that you have described. More than impressive. Um, oh, thank you. I, I, if I have to look backwards, uh, I cannot understand how we managed to do all this. <laughs> but you did. Um, now, um, another, let's say, uh, uh, technical question. Um, as you have uh, mentioned a little bit earlier, you have been involved both in uh, international arbitration proceedings, in uh, dispute resolution cases of construction con contracts before Romanian courts, and uh, probably you have also been involved in uh, local arbitration cases, international or domestic, it, it doesn't matter. Is there, from your perspective, a difference? H how do you see these three alternative uh, uh, ways uh, providing uh, dispute resolution um, uh, solution for, for the needs of the parties involved in this type of contract? Well, I would look at uh, a starting point, uh, the dispute resolution and dispute avoidance using uh, uh, dispute boards or DAB as they're normally um, known uh, through the FIDIC conditions of contract. Um, 
We find that from an engineering point of view that uh, dispute boards are very effective worldwide. And um, I am um, a member of the Dispute uh, Resolution Board Foundation and of the Dispute Board uh, Federation. And uh, we, we maintain, obviously, an international registers of, uh, of dispute boards worldwide. And uh, we find that they are uh, very effective in, uh, in dispute avoidance and in reducing the number of disputes that they do go to arbitration or the court. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they do go to arbitration or the court, um, um, the decisions given by these uh, uh, dispute boards are taken into high considerations by arbitral tribunal and, co and court judges. And in most of the cases, uh, the, the results of an arbitration or a court proceeding is pretty much like uh, the one that the decision are given about yeah. dispute boards. Um, I have a mixed feelings about uh, court and arbitration. I find that arbitration uh, is, has developed, especially over the past 15 years, into something that is uh, uh, dynamic, uh, modern. Um, it, it is well um, arranged uh, by the um, International Chamber of Commerce in Paris. Um, the service they provide uh, is outstanding, it is the only um, a chamber that uh, provides a quality assurance of the awards. Um, courts um, in Romania uh, have been uh, amazingly good, I must say. Uh, I come from a culture of uh, courts in, in Italy and other countries. Um, which they are all overwhelmed with the number of cases. And uh, the, 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 the period to arrive to, to a final resolution is extremely long. I've, I have found surprisingly that Romania is uh, very dynamic. The courts uh, work very well, especially commercial courts. Uh, they have a very experienced judges, especially at the uh, Court of Appeal and uh, Court of Cassation. Um, and they handle construction cases which are normally very complex uh, reasonably well. Um, there are obviously some downsides to this. Um, the number of uh, experts uh, that they are uh, on the list of uh, Ministry of Justice in Romania, um, they do not have the type of expertise that the international experts they have, especially in forensic delay analysis and quantum. Um, so overall, um, I find all three methods of dispute resolutions are valid, um, with arbitration being the most effective one, although uh, it may sometimes um, turn into quite a long procedure and, and has a considerable cost compared to the dispute resolution using dispute boards, which is a fraction of that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm trying to, to reach some uh, conclusions. Uh, if you are the one to choose between dispute resolution before um, state courts and arbitration, it is always going to be arbitration for construction contracts. Is it correct? Certainly that. Okay. I, I would always advise to use arbitration. I'm glad to hear because this is also my view, my, without any question mark, and irrespective of the fact that indeed uh, Romanian courts do function properly, but not to the extent uh, that uh, arbitration can, can offer in terms of advantages for, for the parties. And uh, the second question is, you, you have uh, correctly described uh, how important dispute adjudication boards and adjudication in general uh, is for uh, construction industry abroad, starting from UK and mm, almost everywhere else. Uh, do you agree with me that there is a huge difference, or at least an important difference, between the uh, outcome of adjudication and the, the, the cases when adjudication really represents the last resort, the last stop for the parties in UK and generally in the Western um, European countries, as opposed to Romania? Well, indeed, uh, the major difference between the UK adjudication uh, and adjudication generally under fitting conditions of contract is that uh, the UK one is a statutory adjudication, so the decisions uh, are enforceable, immediately enforceable by the courts. Um, and if you're looking at the statistics over the past uh, 15 years, 
basically um, arbitration and court in, in the UK has reduced um, by half. Because, because uh, of the efficiency of because adjudication. Of the efficiency of adjudication in UK, it's yeah. a very effective way of dispute resolutions, and a contractor can get this money straight away uh, because uh, the decision is enforceable immediately. Unfortunately, dispute resolution through fitting conditions of contract uh, internationally um, as as a, as an impediment to the fact that uh, uh, the decisions are not the rest adjudicata. So, uh, for enforcement, they need to go through arbitration or the court. Um, although um, I've been involved uh, with a colleague of mine uh, from UK, his name is Mark Tigerman, in enforcing some of the first uh, DB decisions which had received a notice of dissatisfaction. Therefore, they were just binding but not finally binding. Mm -hmm. And we created kind of a president, a, a international jurisprudence. Uh, back in 2010, and then uh, many others have followed. Um, it is, uh, I believe, uh, something that needs to be resolved at the EU level or at uh, um, banking institution levels uh, to push countries like Romania, many other countries that use dispute boards and use uh, uh, international funds to pass um, uh, legislation that makes them uh, uh, basically uh, immediately uh, binding so that uh, a dispute uh, uh, um, a dispute between parties can be resolved especially regarding uh, payment for work done uh, without uh, going through years and years of uh, arbitration or litigation for instance if a DAB decision uh, could be enforceable uh, and is related to um, payments for work done uh, that will resolve a cash flow on a construction contract and will, uh, will make the project successful. Um, until that is done, this is one of the, of the downsides of using uh, uh, dispute boards and adjudication, unfortunately. I'm trying to reach to the, the, the real cause or the cause of uh, inefficiency as a final outcome for, for the adjudication here in Romania. And I dare to say, that uh, it is a matter of uh, mentality of the parties involved in construction contracts. Not only state companies, I have seen it also for uh, private companies. Um, first of all, they, they look at the adjudication not like uh, a, a potential response for the problem as a final answer. This is it. I owe you that much or the amount is that or I don't owe you anything, but like an intermediary step and it is always, the, the question that occurs is, okay, it, it may be right, it may be close to, to the truth, but then let's see what the arbitrators or what or the court has to say. Or it is the exactly opposite in UK and other, in other jurisdictions because the parties, if they feel that uh, the, the, the solution provided by the adjudicator represents the reality or something close to reality, they are not interested to push for the, the dispute. In my view, this is the essence, and it is a matter of mentality of Romanian parties. Do you agree with me, or is it...? I agree to the extent that it's not only a mentality of Romania. Uh, I think it's just a commercial mentality worldwide. Uh, no party wishes to pay another party unless he's forced to do that. Mm -hmm. um, it is also a mentality to understand that if you are in a cooperative environment and uh, you I believe in partnering and then you bring a construction company to, to build something. Uh, it is fair to pay them for what they've built, uh, no more, no less. Um, so I don't see why uh, over the years that they see uh, a dispute board as just as a forced step, as a costly uh, cost amongst many others for the project. Um, and they don't see that as a dispute avoidance mechanism that will save money in the long run to the parties and will get projects done. Yeah. So indeed, it's a question of mentality. It's a wrong mentality worldwide uh, uh, in, in case of construction disputes. Uh, there is not a will from uh, the employers especially uh, to find an amicable solution. They want to be always right and this is an issue that uh, will always create disputes. Yeah, uh, 
sticking around the same uh, the same topic, uh, uh, Romania has recently enacted. Uh, I refer to the government decision uh, one per 2018. Mm -hmm. The new contractual conditions for um, European funds uh, contracts, construction contracts, infrastructure contracts, and uh, um, how should I say? There are uh, two or three very important ideas. First of all, uh, adjudication has been completely cancelled in, in this uh, new set of rules. On one hand, on the other hand, the feeding model is, and uh, on the other hand, it is not in force. I, I, I have heard uh, a nice uh, metaphor, the, the feedic sui generis or the feedic Romanian approach. So it is a feedic, but it is not a feedic, an, an adjustment to the Romanian reality. And uh, the, the third, I would say important uh, uh, formula in there is that uh, uh, the jurisdiction will be with the Romanian Arbitration Court, International Arbitration Court attached to the Romanian Chamber of Commerce, which means international local arbitration and not uh, ICC as it has been uh, many times in the past. What's your view on, on all these three uh, uh, ideas? And if you believe that there are others equally important, please uh, feel free to, to touch them. Um, I have uh, followed this uh, quasi saga over the years. Yeah. Um, I was very proud to operate in the Romanian market because it was the only country in the world that had adopted the fitting conditions of contract as their own national conditions of contract. So it was a bold and courageous step yeah. uh, towards the proper uh, contract management and project management because at the end of the day, uh, the conditions of contract of FIDIC are project management tools and they are tested internationally, they are written by engineers, for engineers and they are made for international construction. Theoretically, uh, you don't need to adjust them in any way to, to make them suitable. You don't. If you believe in, in, in fair approach to construction, you just leave the con general conditions of contract as they are because the allocation of risk is well balanced between the parties. Um, the parties that uh, uh, are responsible for certain risk are the are best place to be in their position um, because they've been written this condition of contract by specialists in construction um, practitioners. Um, what uh, is amazing is that uh, if you look at the new conditions of contract, uh, they're not that much different from the fitting condition of contract. Um, however, the downside is that uh, they have removed dispute boards, uh, which is uh, the most important part of a fitting contract, uh, because dispute boards are there for dispute avoidance. They uh, reduce disputes, they give opinion, um, that which they are followed, and uh, they really reduce the number of disputes that they go to arbitration. Um, now, without that um, uh, method of dispute resolution, uh, Matters will have to go to uh, arbitrations uh, during construction and uh, the number of arbitrations will be increased, uh, cost to the parties will be increased and uh, that is not in the spirit of collaboration between contractors and employers. So all in all, um, I cannot say that the new conditions of contract uh, are unbalanced or are bad. They are bespoke conditions of contract, they can work, um, they are quite balanced. But they missed the point that dispute avoidance uh, should have been maintained by the use of dispute boards. Perhaps maintaining adjudication and uh, adopt, adjust the, the standard adjudication model offered by FIDIC to Romanian realities would have been uh, a more uh, suitable uh, formula also. Because uh, in, in my view, I'm not aware and I haven't participated in any way to the discussions and the long debates that led to this formula. But in my view, it is obvious that the Romanian state who enacted the regulation believed that uh, the reality and the experience, we have uh, more than 15 years experience with uh, FIDE contracts, uh, pushed them to adjust slightly in, in, uh, in, uh, in some parts, and as you say, in broad lines, in, in, in essence, they remain a FIDE contract. Uh, but uh, uh, give up, abandon completely adjudication, probably because uh, the feedback that they got from, uh, from the contracts, from the case law, the practice is that uh, adjudication was not efficient or it was not 
the, the, the solution, the formula, as efficient in other jurisdictions. And probably this is how they reach this conclusion. I, I, cannot, uh, I cannot provide another interpretation to the, the formula that we have now uh, as uh, um, a law for, for the future projects ongoing. I think uh, that there was an issue of obviously of uh, royalty. I mean, t for for using uh, fitting conditions of contract, uh, the International Federation of Consulting Engineers uh, um, requires uh, certain agreements with each country that uses them, and um, they have to be paid some royalties. Mm. Um, I don't think that though that that is an is an exceptional cost. Uh, in a construction budget uh, of a country as large as Romania, or even a smaller country. Uh, so I cannot see that a matter of cost. Um, so by doing what they have done, uh, I don't think they have saved any money to the government and to the taxpayers. Um, moving uh, to, the, to the fact that there is a perception that adjudication did not work. Well, out of the most probably 150 adjudications in this country, we did 100, and I acted, acted as counsel on, on all of them. Um, and uh, the various uh, public authorities here, the various employees, they never won one. They lost all of them, because obviously they were in the wrong. Now, they couldn't face that. But they're going to be the same thing in, 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 in domestic arbitration, unless someone is ill-advised that thing because he is a local, they may have um, most probably um, a keen eye towards the government. I don't believe that. No, no. Uh, arbitration is independent, yeah. and uh, especially this is a new chamber that has been revamped in Romania, which are very very pleased to see all the changes that have been made and uh, congratulations, I believe, that you're one of the members of the, of the committee. Yeah. Um, it's definitely going to give a better perception that there was in the past. Um, I did very little uh, uh, domestic arbitration in the past, uh, simply by choice. I didn't want to get involved uh, with the uh, domestic arbitration because it did not have a good reputation at the time. Uh, now I see that they have uh, done some major steps in uh, bringing uh, new um, arbitration rules, which are very much in line with the ICC rules and the international uh, framework. So I believe that that will give a better uh, basis for disputation uh, in, uh, in arbitration. And um, uh, I've seen that there is a major overall about who the uh, arbitrators are going to be and uh, to be more selective and, uh, and, and bring to the table uh, a pool of young, modern uh, arbitrators, highly qualified, such as yourself, um, which I think that uh, it, it will be successful. And uh, together with the uh, initiatives like uh, Romanian Society of Construction Law um, and uh, the, the work of FIDIC that still does uh, through uh, a, a dear friend of mine, Giorgiana Tecucci, um, which is impressive, um, I think that the local arbitration will earn over time uh, the respect that it deserves. But there is still the issue that some or most of the disputes uh, that could have been resolved by a dispute board now will go to arbitration. Yeah, and indeed uh, this is not at all uh, a perfect solution because I, I can uh, imagine a, a long-term uh, contract for a highway, uh, five, six years, plus extension of times, it, it can lead to two or three parallel arbitration proceedings during the unfolding the execution of the contract. And it is very difficult to continue to perform the contract while being involved in two or three uh, ongoing cases. And this is going to happen, unfortunately. This is the unfortunate downside. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, that the spirit of cooperation that there should be between the engineer, supervising the work, the contractor and the employer, and its representatives uh, is, is going to be lost uh, into the legal uh, matters that will uh, obviously arise uh, during uh, disputation. It's, it's an unfortunate move that the Romanian government has made. Time will tell. Uh, there might be a possibility that they will go back and will uh, rethink the positions about uh, dispute adjudication. Yeah, if, uh, uh, if we look back, uh, their, uh, their view on uh, jurisdiction, contractual formulas, uh, has changed 
slightly, but it has changed in the last seven, ten years. So none of the solutions that they, they have chosen at a certain point remained uh, uh, unchanged in the future. And probably uh, the, the feedback uh, will confirm or not uh, the accuracy of one of these formulas. Well, the time will tell because, I mean, yeah. a new contracts which will be tendered uh, from now on uh, will be with a different contract than FIDIC. Um, but there are a number of contracts still under FIDIC that will go on for another five, six years. Yeah. Um, so by that time, whether it will completely disappear, the use of FIDIC, or, or somehow uh, there will be a change of heart at government level, and they will look most probably at using the new uh, FIDIC conditions of contract, the second edition of 2017, mm. um, which they've been published last year, and they are really excellent conditions of contract. This was, uh, you have anticipated my next question, uh, talking about the news and the new guys in town, uh, we, we, can, uh, we cannot avoid uh, discussing a little bit, five minutes, about the new um, uh, 2017 edition of FIDIC contracts. Uh, for, for those uh, people specialized in construction and construction law or not, can you synthesize a little bit what's new? I think this is the question for everybody. Incidentally, I'm just coming back from Georgia, from Tbilisi, where there was uh, the fourth uh, um, regional conference of FIDIC and uh, the Association of Consulting Engineering of Georgia. Um, I have been always uh, a, a fair critique of, um, of FIDIC over the years. And um, starting from the 1990-87, the fourth edition of the Red Book, um, going to the 1999 uh, first edition, uh, I've always found that there were some loose, some loose ends in, in this conditions of contract. Um, what I have surprisingly found by reviewing the second edition and, uh, uh, that was uh, published in 2017 is that they managed uh, in a very elegant way to close those loose ends. Um, now there is a more prescriptive contract for each of the party. Um, the balance of risks uh, has been improved uh, even more than what was done in the 1999 first edition of FIDIC. Um, I see them much more as a project uh, uh, management tool uh, than, than the conditions of contract. Um, I, I really believe and I'm excited about using them because I find it to be them really well prepared. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about these new conditions of contract and I think um, uh, professionals that they have respect for their profession um, will look at them with a keen eye because uh, uh, it brings back uh, the, engineer, the engineer neutrality. So the engineer is still an agent, uh, but he has to act neutral between the parties when uh, he deals uh, uh, with agreement and determinations, uh, which goes back pretty much to the uh, fourth edition of FIDIC where the engineer was an independent. Um, I don't think FIDIC believed that the use of a word neutral means independent. It just meant that being a professional engineer who neutrally at that point in time uh, um, provides a dispute avoidance in order to reach an agreement and there is a prescriptive methodologies how to do that and, uh, and then he issue a determination um, which is far more prescriptive, is more structured and um, um, I believe that the parties will uh, be ill-advised to um, manipulate these new conditions of contract through the particular conditions uh, because it will become almost mission impossible because of the contract now has become almost double in size. Um, but was required, was needed, um, because there were too many loose ends, as I said, that had to be closed, and they managed to do that. A lot of people worked to them. Uh, it went through the normal uh, uh, peers review and friendly reviews and committee reviews. And um, I believe that uh, it's, a, it's a way to go in construction. 
from now on, using those conditions of contract uh, issued in 2017 by FedEx. Mm -hmm. So um, I understand that uh, in a very pragmatic uh, and uh, to, uh, oriented towards result, FIDIC has managed to clarify almost all, hopefully, the famous uh, controversies and uh, debates on, on uh, some of the uh, um, contractual formulas and pro problems that were originated by the unclear uh, and the gaps that uh, the, the clauses had. Uh, when, when you discussed prior to starting uh, um, today, you mentioned uh, the clear clarification of that uh, uh, famous situation where the DIB is not in place and uh, the problems that occur because the contract was not signed. And uh, you told me that it's crystal clear, there can be no dispute about it uh, under the new formula. In can you please elaborate a indeed, little bit? Indeed. Uh, I mean, FIDIC felt that rightly, I believe, uh, that uh, in order for the DAB to be in place between the parties, the parties need to sign a dispute adjudication agreement. Yeah. In the past, uh, that was a gap, yeah. uh, and there were uh, quite a few ex parte uh, dispute uh, board uh, proceedings that went on, um, because if a party failed to agree, uh, that is a breach of good faith and a breach of contract. Many times it refused to sign the agreement and because uh, they... You know, uh, uh, yeah. that should have not deprived the contractor or the employer to pursue the dispute mechanism. Mm. Um, however, it had a lot of problems and a lot, yeah. of, uh, lot of jurisprudence uh, was born on that issue. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been cleared by, uh, by FIDIC by saying if the parties do not sign a dispute adjudication agreement with the DAB, there is no DAB in place, then you move to arbitration. Crystal clear. Yeah. It's crystal clear. They have cleared many other issues like uh, um, the gap, the, the, the quasi gap that there was uh, in subclause 20.7, which I personally believe there was never any gap. Um, but then has been made very clear. And uh, the way claims management is now resolved, uh, it's far more prescriptive, there is definitions about what is a claim, uh, the different type of claims, um, and the way now disputation works. Um, they have really cleared their act, they've done a good job. Yeah, and. Um I appreciate it a lot. I love this um, um, legal approach. Um, and I will explain the context. Sometimes it happens that in Romanian laws, you discover surprising legal texts which seem to be redundant, futile, or excessive in explaining an obvious situation. And then I always say that I prefer the legislator providing that useless explanation to make it clear for everybody rather than leave a question mark for some of the uh, participants to, to applying the law and create problems in the case. So, and the same here. What's the cost for providing in two other lines? There is, it is like this, it is like that. I think it is uh, preferable uh, and looking at the case law, looking at, uh, if, if you remember those uh, hundreds of pages of submissions in one case debating about those gaps, now it is in everybody's interest to clarify uh, some of, of that uh, uh, of, of those situations. It's indeed so. Yeah, a more prescriptive approach brings clarity. Yeah. and I think yeah. uh, it is the right way to go about. I it. have no doubt that the parties will, are going to be able to discover some other gaps and some other matters of interpretation. But uh, the, the, this is another issue. But nothing yeah. is impossible for lawyers. Yeah, I mean lawyers have to survive. Yeah, we we cannot clarify everything and. Uh, send lawyers home. Um, let's, uh, let's move to another topic. Um, I think that uh, the most delicate, uh, sensitive, uh, core issues um, concerning construction disputes are delay analysis methodologies, quantum ascertainment uh, and concurrency and uh, concurrent uh, delays. They are not all, but they are some of the most sensitive uh, issues. My question is the following, in, again, a very delicate uh, uh, mission request for you. Uh, if you can, in five minutes, uh, explain a little bit how, what is your view, and especially, I'm very curious, what is your view of how can you solve these problems when you are forced to convince a judge and not an arbitrator about the delay analysis methodologies and to produce evidence to convince the judge in this respect, to, as an example. 
Well, I, as an expert myself in the forensic delay analysis, I've learned over the years that uh, it is only effective uh, if you explain it in such a way that a lawyer understands it. This is a good beginning. That is the, that is the test. If a lawyer understands it, then it is, it is clear and, and it is going to go uh, ways. What you say is a, a golden rule. I always say to my clients when they explain me technical issues, not necessarily in cons construction contracts. I cannot follow you. If I cannot follow you, it is impossible for a judge to follow or your for argumentation. An arbitrator. It is yeah. true. Yeah. It is true. So simplicity is everything. Yeah. Uh, there is obviously a, a, a large amount of due process, uh, um, uh, you know, that uh, uh, has to be followed in order to prepare a proper forensic delay analysis. Uh, the research of the contemporary records and, and uh, of the comp contemporaneous programs that have been used. Um, in the past, uh, and still now, is considered uh, a black art. Um, because it has been uh, performed by uh, personnel um, and professionals who had not been trained properly in forensic, in forensic delay analysis. Um, if it's done properly by uh, certified uh, engineers and professionals, uh, it is very helpful. And if it's explained in simple terms, uh, it is very effective and credible at um, dispute adjudication tribunal or arbitral tribunal level or at the judge level. Um, there is, however, a shortage of very good forensic delay analysts worldwide. Uh, even the, even uh, if there are those that they believe to be forensic uh, delay analysts, they are not, in my view. And I see it more and more in arbitrations when I cross-examine so-called experts in delay analysis who unfortunately are not and they fail miserably understand. Um, it, what it is required, I think, is just a, a clean-up of people's acts, um, a more education uh, towards what is right and what is wrong. And I believe that two organizations have done a brilliant job. The Society of Structural Law with the latest the second edition of the protocol, they brought much clearance regarding forensic delay analysis. And uh, American Association of Cost Engineers um, has also done greatly with the various publications and that there is more and more uh, on the market uh, um, that helps uh, to appreciate uh, what is a forensic uh, profession, a forensic analysis like any other forensic analysis. Um, it is uh, very important also to, to look at the common law and civil law approach. I believe that civil law approach has a more pragmatic uh, approach to concurrency, concurrent delay. Uh, for me, professionally, true concurrency does not exist. It's a utopia. Uh, um, there can be some concurrent uh, periods uh, for which if can be proven that one without the other would uh, cause damage, then obviously one party should be penalized during the period. Um, however, dominant cause or delay that is uh, the basic principle under civil law so your uh, point is, sorry for interrupting, uh, your point is that there is always a dominant cause yes. and you can never say that two causes uh, uh, interact in such a manner that it is impossible to make a differentiation. Uh, it is. It, it, yeah. it never happens in, in, in reality. So concurrency needs to be taken with a pinch of salt. Uh, there is uh, a need for a practical approach to it. Uh, but uh, it needs to be taken into consideration always the dominant cause and the entitlement of the party that has been wronged and, uh, and delayed uh, um, in that respect. However, if it can be proven that there are certain periods of time where both parties were uh, in delay and uh, both delays were critical, uh, then obviously the party that uh, will receive a compensation, uh, some deductions will have to be done and, and it's up to proper forensic delay analyst to identify those periods um, by uh, using a balanced approach and uh, um, a very practical and contractual approach. And uh, um, you, you said earlier that uh, you consider that Romanian courts, uh, I refer to dispute resolution cases before ordinary state courts, uh, managed to, you know, see through all this and uh, pro provide uh, uh, 
um, appropriate, uh, accurate uh, decisions. Uh, isn't it difficult, or is it, in, in my view, this is the most important disadvantage or shortage of uh, this uh, unfortunate uh, decision to send to courts uh, uh, FIDIC contracts and FIDIC disputes. Uh, it is, according to Romanian civil procedure rules, impossible to administer this type of evidence in the typical way prescribed by the Romanian Civil Procedure Code. Isn't this, do you agree with me? Is it correct? I do to a certain extent. Uh, my experience so far is that uh, with matters of delay analysis, concurrency, the court have dealt pretty well. Despite the fact that the, uh, the list of judicial experts, um, unfortunately, uh, disappointing in respect of uh, certain specialties like a delay analysis, it's something there new. are no experts. As there far are as no know, experts, yeah. and yeah. they used specialists, which are uh, they are even less experts yeah. than them. Uh, but the judges have used common sense, and uh, they have used uh, the expert or parts mm -hmm. uh, that the parties have appointed uh, in order to identify how credible their evidence was, and they have come up so far with very good decisions. Mm. Um, however, uh, local courts here yeah, do not have the. Uh, sophistication or arbitration or the sophistication of a uh, technology construction court uh, like in England that uh, mm -hmm. there are judges that are engineers and obviously they deal only with construction and disputes. It's a completely different perspective. It's a completely yeah, different perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have too much time left and uh, I, would, uh, I would address a final question which I think is uh, very interesting for all Romanian practitioners. You stay in Romania, you have your main, uh, your main uh, base or headquarter here, but you work on all continents or many countries, four or five or six continents. What is, in your view, and this is a personal curiosity and I'm sure uh, the, the people watching us uh, are going to share my view, what is the difference, what, is, uh, what makes uh, Romanian parties involved in dispute or disputes under Romanian law with Romanian parties uh, different than in South America, North America. Is there a Romanian flavor, a Romanian something special to uh, construction contracts and avoiding dispute and disputing construction contracts? Can well, you? What I find uh, uh, in Romania is that there is an extremely sophisticated uh, legal society and the numbers of lawyers that have embraced the construction law, which you don't find in many other countries. There is, really? a, there is quite a lot of construction lawyers, that even if they don't uh, you know, uh, present themselves as such, but that they are construction lawyers. And uh, I, uh, I am amazed day by day with uh, my work that uh, I'm, I'm blessed to find exceptional lawyers in this country and uh, generally uh, the, the level of, uh, uh, of the legal minds here in this country is very high because uh, I think it was the right place, right time after the fall of communism uh, to embrace Europe, to embrace all the new uh, ways of uh, doing uh, construction law and they're doing a brilliant job. I think this is a huge compliment for uh, Romanian lawyers and, uh, and uh, not only for Romanian uh, legal people. To say, and uh, I'm, I'm also impressed by uh, your assessment uh, uh, in uh, relation to Romanian courts, which I, I, I agree. I mean, if you think of, uh, of the, how many different files the judges are forced to deal with, the administrative court judges, and uh, how well they manage to do it, this is really impressive uh, from, from this perspective, looking at the judges dealing with uh, construction disputes public contracts, uh, construction dispute. Truly remarkable. Yeah. Mr. Di Folco, it was a pleasure. Thanks a lot for your presence. Thanks a lot for sharing um, this um, amazing information and uh, your perspective concerning Romania arbitration and not only. Uh, I'm sure we are going to have some other opportunities in the future to have you back uh, at the arbitration hour. And I'm sure that uh, we are going to, to be able to uh, provide uh, a lot of valuable information for the um, more and more people that are interested in arbitration and construction arbitration, which is the queen and king of arbitration nowadays in Romania. Thanks again for your presence. Thank here. you very much.
Încheiem ediția de astăzi. Sunt convins că a, a fost uh, un subiect sau au fost subiecte excepționale pentru toată lumea. Ne revedem peste o lună. Rămâneți cu bine. La revedere!